Brian again. Um, figured I would do a complete uh, update or tour of the fish room. I haven't really done that for a while. Shouldn't say the fish room, but all my tanks. You know what I mean. So we'll start off here at the 125 gallon African cichlid tank. Um, a lot of people um, are always saying that I don't show this enough. Um, so I will start off with this tank. Um, probably just don't show it as much because it's, uh, it's not, I haven't really been doing anything with it new, and I've had a lot of new projects going on, which kind of keep me excited, so, but anyway, um, here it is, um, some of these guys are still growing like crazy, one of my OBs here, Venustis, the other Venustis, this is big sexy here, and the other Venustis. Um, yeah, you know, everything's doing good. Some of my Venustis fry from my last batch I ended up putting in here. So I got like four or five Venustis that are like this size right here. There's a couple of them. Um, some of them look like they could be males, some females. Got a few other miscellaneous females in here that I'm going to get rid of. My hope is sometime within this year still that I can um, really kind of call out some of the fish that aren't the most stunning colors in here, sell them off, and, and just get some really sweet colored peacocks and haps. They're just so hard to come by in my area, so I would have to do a, a, uh, an online order, which is fine. Um, but um, that's kind of what holds me up, though, is just because, you know, shipping costs and everything, and it's not as easy as just going down to your local fish store. So, so yeah, everything's doing great with this tank, though. Um, I'm thinking about, I probably said this in a prior video, but I'm pretty sure I'm going to take out the crushed coral and put in a pool filter sand. I just like the sand look a little better. And then I'll probably rescape and think about maybe some different rocks. I'm not sure in this tank. Um, but, you know, I don't need to crush coral. My pH is already so high straight out of the faucet here. So, um, so that's that. So, I will take you over here to the office and show you the 150-gallon discus tank. They're wanting to be fed right now. They're all over at this end of the tank every time I walk in the room. Um, the algae problem I talked about previously um, is still there, but not nearly as bad. I've been removing algae every water change, and I'm removing less and less of it. Um, I'm, I've taken my photo period way down, and that seems to have helped, but it has hurt some plant growth the growth the blix is not growing as bushy as normal and um the pogostamen pogostamen uh, rectus is kind of dying off as you can see here so um i also had um i, I put a lot of frog bit in here i don't know if you can see that most of it's I, I removed a lot of it now the other water change but that seemed to have helped too so um, one cool thing, and I can't find them right now as I'm looking, I'll try to find them real quick, is that um, my puffers had fry. <laughs> um, here's the two um, puffers, the adults. Just these little dwarf puffers or pea puffers, whatever you want to call them. But the other day I saw a little teeny one swimming around. And then last night, um, there was two of them swimming around together, and they were over in this area, but I don't see them there now. So uh, we'll see if if they make it, I guess. Um, 
close-up of an Amano shrimp. Another thing I did too in this tank is I added some cherry barbs to help with the algae, help eat the algae. I wish I could find those uh, those baby puffers right now, but uh, it doesn't sound, seem like I'm going to be able to do that. I don't want to focus on this tank forever because we got a lot to cover. This is going to be a long video, by the way, too, because I'm going to do all the tanks. So, um, the 90 gallon over here, not doing as good as far as the algae getting under control, but it's better. Not doing as good as the 150, though. Um, so, uh, you can see some, some of the green hair type algae still growing on the dragon stone and down at the bottom of the S wrappings and stuff like that. Discus are all doing, doing fairly good in there. Haven't added any since my last uh, video on this tank. Lexa is doing okay. Not as good as the other tank. Um, by the way, the, the S Reppens carpet is, is coming along fairly nicely in this tank too. Uh, I need to get some more to add into this area where I remove some Blixa. I'll have to thin out this Blixa too, so um, probably sell a little of that off here soon. Ah, I just wish I could find those teeny tiny puffers because they're cool, but anyway. I will get a video on those next time I see them. Um, so anyway, back to the 90. I guess I covered pretty much everything on the 90. Um, down below here, <clears throat> kind of been firing back up the red cherry shrimp tank. I've been ordering some shrimp here and there online. Bought a few locally too. Working on my water parameters and things like that. Uh, you can see a few red cherries on that piece of driftwood there. Um, I don't know, there's over 20 of them in here. They're just not all out right now, I guess. So, there's one. So that's cool. And then I got some more red cherries over here in this bottom tank. Oops, sorry about that. There's one on the Choya wood. One hiding on there. Boy, my zoom isn't working real good, or my focus, I should say. So there's a few. Had a few buried females. I'm not sure if they've had kids yet. A um, couple of my orders, too. I got some peewees. You can see a few right there. So those aren't new, newly born ones that I've seen get, um, in this tank. But, yeah, there's some shrimp around in here. And then uh, more shrimp up here. This is... My blue pearl tank, a little five gallon I've had up here going for quite a while now. I've got, <clears throat> I don't know, five or ten in this tank, it's hard to tell. But the other night, last night, I found two buried females. This is one of them right here, I believe. Let's see if I can zoom in. It's so hard to tell unless you get, get yeah. So that's cool. And uh, there was another one too, they were right next to each other. and. There's one up there in the sponge. I don't know if that's one of the buried ones or not. I'm not gonna get a good focus with that glare there. But anyway, so that's doing well. Um, planning on, I got some real dragon stone or okio stone, whatever you wanna call it, uh, from my local fish store. So, uh, That'll go in there eventually. I'll take you downstairs now. Lots been going on down here. Um, some new fish, stuff like that. Um, so why don't we just start over here in the 90. The 90 gallon now is a Red Devil grow out tank. I got five Red Devils from my buddy Sean Armantrout. These are F1s from uh, his wi various wild caught 
Um, three of them came from one pair and three of them came from another, I believe, if I remember right what he told me. Uh, this is for sure one of the males here, the biggest one, and then uh, he told me that this was almost for sure a female. These guys are awesome. They, uh, they're really fun to watch. They just pound the food. Um, I'll do a quick little feeding for you here since I, since I got you. Just so you can kind of see. They're, they're really fun to watch. It's just a little bit of Southern Delight power feed. But uh, they just pound it. They just go after it. So that's pretty fun. So I got these little quarry cats in here and a couple of cordi that uh, that I'd gotten from uh, from my buddy Mike um, just has dithers <clears throat> and I forget what type of pleco that is but so that's doing well um, down below this is going to be moved hopefully sometime this summer and in its place should, will likely go a 120 fat boy tank um, but this is just the planet tank still, way overgrown. Every time I seem to do a video on it, uh, it's, it's when it needs a trimming. Um, should have done a trimming before I shot this video, but I didn't, so that's how it goes. Sorry, I'm just getting blown up with text here. I'm sure you guys can probably hear that. Um, so I'll be trimming this soon. If anybody needs some Stargrass, some uh, Hygro SP Japan, some Limnophilia aromatica, I've got a ton of it. Rotala, um, not uh, indica, Rotala rotundifolia, I got a bunch of that too. So, um, got some compact high grow in there. Um, so, let me know if you guys are interested in, in any of that. I'll, I'll be selling some of that stuff off soon. So, when I do the trimming. Now, up above the Hoga tank different set of hogas in here you might uh, recognize if you haven't uh, been following my well I not, haven't done a YouTube video on these guys yet but um, if you follow me on Facebook you know that I've got a pair uh, that I picked up from uh, Mike Mann Mr. Mann 316 uh, these are the ones that he had in his two I believe it was a 220 this is a pair he's had for about a year I, I, you know, I'd like to spawn these, but if I can't, I can't. I just wanted a pair that lives well together, which they have. And then, of course, I get them home, and look, we got a divider. He beat her up pretty good. She's back here. She's healing up. This divider's been in for a week now. She's been healing up, but this guy's just a beast. Love him. He's awesome. Just a nice specimen. So, happy to have these into the fish room. Down below is probably what I'm most excited about right now. These are the uh, uh, F2 Gorillas Black Umbies. These were in here with, there was like a total of nine of them in here if you remember. And um, about uh, two weeks ago, these two started, I noticed they had been pairing off and they were just going nuts on all the other uh, umbies in this tank so I removed the other two and within a week after that they spawned and I don't know if you can see this but there is a cloud of fry down there and so far they are being awesome parents they spawned about a week ago and I don't know how many fry we've got but there's a lot of them so I'm pretty pumped about that. We'll see what happens. Their colors are just awesome right now because of the, uh, you know, the breeding dress. I just love when these zombies get this awesome blonde color. So pretty jacked up about these guys. Um, looking forward to seeing what happens here. But uh, first spawn was a success with these two, so I couldn't be happier. So stay tuned for more updates on these. We will move up here to the F1 Real Mag Umbies. They are doing great. They are growing like weeds. Got a couple that are obviously going to kind of be the beasts uh, in here. They're bigger than others. Um, this guy that just came out from behind the rocks is one of them. 
Some of them are freckling up really nicely already. There's another one of the beasts back there. Um, so yeah, these are these are been, these have been fun to watch too. Just watching them grow. They're hungrier than heck right now. I'm gonna give them a little of the. These guys have been on the small cichlid, and they can. Most of them are big enough where they can eat the veggie krill now too. So I've been putting that in at times. Whoops, got a ton of food in there, but watch a little feeding frenzy. Looking forward to seeing some of these guys grow out so that I can hopefully get a pair out of them. These are Magnus babies from uh, from Mike's uh, Magnus and Beast, that pair, which you've all seen on YouTube. So that's cool. It's kind of hard because these guys are so fast moving to really zoom in and see some of the, the freckling going on on these guys, but it's a nice one. Anyway, down below we've got what I'm just calling right now is kind of my mixed Amphilophus tank. There's my Hoga male. Um, his, uh, his female is still um, over with Triton, Mike's male, um, trying to get them to spawn over his place. So, um, but he's doing fine here. Um, he will um, eventually be reunited with his female and this will be their tank more than likely. Um, as you can see I've got some My Devils in here too. Um, those I don't think will be staying with me very long. And then there's a few Bacordi and then you can see this female Xyloensa back here hiding. She was just popping her head up. Um, she will be going sometime soon too. So um, uh, the male her male died. I think I said that in a prior video. So um, I I just soon get rid of her at this point. So and then a couple of Bacordi in this tank. So that's that's cool. These are the umbies that I pulled out um, from the other tank. The Gorillas Black. Um, once that pair paired up, this guy's kind of the stud. Although he's scared of me right now. He's been torturing the rest of them, so I got a divider up. You can see these guys are pretty nipped up. Um, this one seems to be the, the stud from this side of the class, so can't really tell yet male or female on, the, on many of these, so a couple small ones up there. So I don't know how long I'll keep these. They're just in a 55 right now. Um, if it works out where I can get them into a bigger tank, I may try to grow a couple out a little bigger and just see. Otherwise, I'll probably move move these on at some point here too. But they're just such cool fish. It's you know I take take them out of the 125 over there, and it's hard to just get rid of them. So down below here, <clears throat> we have got uh, some Venustus fry growing out. Uh, these are about a month old, probably. These are um, offspring from Big Sexy and the female up in that tank. So uh, just growing these out again. I don't know why I keep doing it, but I'll sell them off or bring them into my local fish store for some store credit or something eventually. So if anyone needs some Venustis, um, I can uh, cut you a real good deal on that, on that too um, once these get a little bit bigger. And then of course, uh, what did I see the other day? female Venustus was holding with big time puff mouth took her and put her down in this little 20 long and within a, about two days she spit what looks to be 50 or so fry so they're eating a piece of gel food that I made with a Southern Delight small cichlid so that is the tour of the tanks at this point um, loving the new fish room down here in the basement a um, couple of expansions that I will be doing is um, I'm going to build another four foot stand like this that will, what I'll do is, uh, like I said before, I'm going to put a 120 fat boy here, move this 75 over to here, 
I'll build a, I'm going to build a four foot stand where I can have a 75, a 75, and then on top I'll be able to have some smaller tanks that'll be shrimp tanks. And then over here I'm going to build another four foot stand which will have probably that 55 and 40 long over here and then also small shrimp tanks on top or I may get rid of these and do some some 40 breeders sideways or you know turn the other way so that I can fit like three I don't know how how wide a 40 breeder is or maybe it'd be two and two and two and two but I need some grow out tanks um, just for when breeding happens and stuff like that or if I need to separate some and that type of thing so so that's kind of the plan that'll take place probably within the next few months um, I've already started getting it, the, the, some of the plans already in motion because I've got those two 10 gallons over there and this 20 long that'll be probably shrimp tanks just want to breed a few shrimp too that's kind of fun I, I enjoy the small shrimp I know a lot of the guys out there that are into the big cichlids like this um, don't really like the shrimp or aren't into it but it's just something that I've always over the last couple of years been kind of fascinated with so anyway I'll give you guys one parting shot here of the umby pair again she don't like the camera right now Thanks for watching guys and uh, don't forget to go check out Aquatic Support Systems on Facebook, on Instagram, on Twitter, on Google Plus and make sure to subscribe to all the members of Team Aquatic Support. I will link their channels below. Talk to you guys later.